Alright guys, hello and welcome back to some more Dragon Quest XI. Where we last left off, we got through the door of departure and made it to the Hotto Step. So now, we are going to go through this area and see what all we can find. It's a new area, it's a new place, and we have a orange slime. What do you have for us? We have some uh, Garudas, I think they're called? We got those three battles done. Yeah, the second Garuda came up and uh, attacked me as you saw. So now we just have to press onward through the Hato step. God, look at that place. Look at that volcano. Whoa, is that Mount Doom? Mount Doom's great. Oh, we have a Bongo Drongo. I think that's what they're called. Lamp. Hato, door departure. Thank you. Slimes after we defeat the Bongo Drongo. And we have some things, I believe, up around here. Nope. It's on the other side, that's right. So we're gonna go up here. Run around. We have the sparkly spot. Lava lump. Yeah, we can't get to that yet. We need a different kind of monster to get to it. Can't go up there. This one. And I am right over here. Yeah, it's really nice being able to just run around and grab things sometimes. What is this? Formaline. Warm it's fun just run around, enjoy the scenery, and grab the items, you know? It's kind of what I love about the uh, open world JRPGs or games like, you know, from ga from soft games. I can just kind of do what I want, just kind of run around. Well, I like FromSoft games because they, you, you know, give you little to no story, your own character, and you can just kind of run and do what you want in it, in your own pace, in your own order. Though sometimes I like the more consolidated... I got a nice few items there. Now sometimes I like the more consolidated, just straightforward, open-ish world JRPG to where I can just run around, just kind of do my own thing, really. Let's still follow a tight-knit story, because I love storytelling. It puts a smile on my face. I'm going to cross over this little log here. Fight some lump mages. some. <laughs> All right, Levin leveled up. Perfect. Now, Levin's now level 11. Nice. No, so is Eric. Wonderful. Now we're not going to use our skill points right away. We have a campsite here. Don't really need it at the moment, but we'll get it later. Getting further into the Hato Step, where we've got a few more items. Hello, little friend. Got something up here. Can't remember what this is. Oh, Wake Robin. We've got some more ore we need to mine. in an area we shouldn't go into yet. I mean, we can, but I don't really feel like it. But yeah, really, really enjoy more of the tight-knit stories. I'm, I'm too extreme. So I either like the really tight-knit stories where you have, like, a big world to run around in and do it at your own leisure, or you have uh, more from the FromSoft games where it's abstract and just go wherever you want. Just do anything that you please. So that's always fun and nice. And also, of course, you know, games like The Witcher 3, I also thoroughly enjoy. I guess that's a middle ground type of game. You get big open world and you get big tight knit narrative. But you also have loads and loads of side quests to do. Oh, Eastbound. Loads of side quests to do and you get to do them just pretty much at your own leisure. It's that's nice as well. I I, get, I enjoy that. Can jump up here? No? That's unfortunate. Uh, rabbit. Alright, Eric almost died to that one. It's a little bit rough. Not too difficult, but just, just a wee bit rough. So, ooh, we have a chest over here. Hello. That's weird. Sometimes when you're running and you... Oh, a mini metal. Nice. 
Uh, sometimes when you're when you're running around, I feel like as you bump into something, yeah, it like slows down your speed back to your normal run, normal run, running speed, and then you have to wait and then press it again. It's weird. I don't get it all the time. Uh, how much more have we got to find? Oh, there's one right behind me. Sir. Okay. I guess I didn't check on this side over here. No, I did not. Okay. Cool. Uh, glass for it. Alright. I guess we can make our way back over to Hotto. Or, well, actually, we can go to Mount Huji. That sounds pretty alright. Yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll go to Mount Huji real fast, mice. I just love that. In this world of monsters and mythical stuff and all these crazy things, you just have ordinary mice running around, or birds, or you know, just like what's over here in a second is just deer. Just, just deer. I don't know. That's always funny to me, having these wide variety of very cartoony, very dangerous looking, spooky or silly monsters. And then what do you have? Deer. Rat. Uh, birds. It's entertaining to me. That's about Yuji. How Yuji? Mount Yuji. A bear. Uh, got a little bit spooked there, but you know, I figured it out. Just gotta be smart with you. That's the cool thing about this game. Oh, shut. Okay. It's a really nice thing about this game is you don't really need to over embellish yourself. Like you can obviously level up and do things that you need to, but the game's only as hard as you make it. With you know enemies roaming around the land and no random encounters, you pretty much have free reign to make yourself leveled as high as you want. And the only thing you would have to get levels or EXP from is just fighting bosses when you respawn. So like you could you could do that. You could get levels just from fighting bosses and no other enemy. It's really nice. And you would just be relying on your item usage, your skills, your RNG to an extent, because sometimes the enemy's patterns are kind of awful, but you know, it's pretty much in any game. And your skill will determine like how much you're able see look dear. How much you're able to account for that type of RNG and deal with it. So anyway, we're here. We are entering Hato Village. A very Japanese oriented and themed sort of area. And that's the theme with all these places. Oh, excuse me. The theme with all these places is they're widely different. Civilization at last. And I think it's safe to say we're not being followed anymore. <laughs> I thought so anyway. <laughs> Two travelers come. Their timing is auspicious as the day's new dawn. And they talk funny too. My bathhouse awaits. Savor its steamy embrace as frogs do spring rain. Rejoice, honored guests. For to mark this happy day, you may sweat for free. Um, we're kind of busy to be sweating. Thanks. Appreciate the offer, though. Too busy to bathe? Too busy to wash away the scent of the road? Huh? <laughs> okay, maybe I'm not at my freshest. Fine. I'll visit your bathhouse if it means that much to you. Might as well go sweat off the journey while we have the chance. I'll see you in there, okay? The winds bring a guest. Joyfully, I shall guide him to where bliss awaits. <laughs> All right. Well, you have fun, um, sweating, Eric. While you're doing that, I'm going to be exploring and looting everything we can in this town. So, as you know what our custom is... Oh, hello. Okay. You know what our custom is? We're going to take an area. We're going to scour all around it. 
and then we are going to continue recipe book introduction to armor and so it makes bronze armor cool that'll be useful so yeah we're going to scour every little area here because usually there's always something so what i'm going to do is scour around these edges first that's usually a good idea and then we can backtrack and go back into the the houses Ooh, hello Come on the line. As you can see, we've got actual uh, side quests to do here now. Haven't had a side quest for a little while. They're fairly sporadic through the game. I guess I think 39 or 40 in total, so not a whole lot of side quests, but enough that they give you it's not too many either. Many metal. They give you pretty good items for uh, completing them usually. And I guess because they're so condensed, they're able to put a little bit more into them. They're not anything too crazy. They're not Witcher 3 side quests, but you get some pretty good items and you're able to do really cool things with what you get with it. So, and then the items really help too. They're, sometimes they're really nice items. Okay, cool. Now we can begin searching within the buildings. All right, so look around. Hello, madame, sir. We're going to uh, inspect your inn, see how things are. See, they're in tip-top shape for uh, for guests, in case you ever take any. We have a party of two at the moment, so all you need is one room, plain clothes, cool, Sell, selling material. Or crafting material, you know, that's always viable as well. Using it for crafting and creating new armor. Nope. Everything seems to be in tip-top shape. Thank you for your time. Item shop. I'm probably going to be using the item shop more than anything, because I don't really use inns all that much. Well, inns in older games were kind of necessary. That's all you had. In this game, it's not so much. It's... Essentially, just go to a campsite. You don't have to run back to a town like you did in 8 to... to rest. So... It's kind of convenient. Would y'all like to see a playthrough of Dragon Quest VIII? It's been a well, not a long time. I beat it sometime last year because it had been a while since I had last played it. But it's one of my favorite games. It and this are tied, hence why I'm using the Dragon Quest VIII music for a lot of stuff. So what we got Diary of Tetsu the Smith, Part One: A Dream Is Born. My name is Tetsu. I'm 48 years old. I am a blacksmith. This morning I sat, an amazing coin I spied, wondrous workmanship. I made inquiries, spent all day and learned its name, the mini metal. I must leave Hato and find the coin's creator, learn how it was made. Do not fear, mother, I shall return a hero, a smith without peer. You know, the way he said he inquired about it makes it sound like he just spoke to the to the coin, to the mini metal, over and over for an extended period of times and eventually got fed up with him. He's like, look. I'm a mini metal, okay? There, you learned my name. Shut up. And now he's just, he's so content with that. Wax and thread. He's like, aha, a mini metal you are. And if you notice, everyone in this town pretty much speaks in poem or rhyme, lyrically. So we have a side quest up over here, which I think we can go ahead and complete because. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Because uh, we already did the exploration of going around and getting the materials and such, so we can pretty much go out. That's kind of like why I like playing the way I do. It's fun to go out and run, come in, and do things in, you know, the proper order. You know, come into the town, get all your stuff, and then run back out, complete your quest, go on your little adventure, and then come back. But... I like also just consolidating everything to, all right, I'm going to get all my outdoor exploration, explor exploration, all my outdoor exploration and item collecting done first, and then I'll take care of all the town stuff. It's a very methodical way to play the game. Not a lot of people enjoy it, but you know, it's what works for me. It's what I enjoy. But sometimes I do like doing it the old-fashioned way. You don't really have much choice in 
you are a pilgrim, then come, friend. Join me in prayer. Give thanks and be well. You gotta really have a choice in what you do in older Dragon Quest games or older RPGs in general. It's just kind of, all right, you made it through the RNG battles. You're into town. Aha, now we have a side quest for you to do. Go back out and do it. And also, you couldn't have done it before. You couldn't have done it before because it didn't unlock till just now, so have fun. Kind of an archaic approach to it, but you know. Old school JRPGs. Yeah, what would y'all like to see next? I'm planning on, you know, having at least a second playthrough to run concurrent with this on the channel. I already know what it's going to be. I also want to know if y'all guys would like to see, I don't know, possibly another game too. I don't know how I would find the time for three games, but one one after this one pops up. No, one after this one finishes. Do y'all want a second Dragon Quest game to be played? I know they're kind of longer games. They're gonna have lots of parts. Games like, I like long games, all right? Games that'll take me a lot of time to do. Oh, I didn't go in the building. You know, I like longer running games. They're, they keep my attention. I like getting my 60 or I guess $70 worth out of my game. Or 70 now. I need to buy a PS5 actually. That's what I want to do. That's something I need. I don't need, I want it. But I want to do a playthrough of Demon Souls on the on the channel because I own it for the PS3. But recording anything on the PS3 is a hassle. So I've kind of So my initial thing was, oh I'm gonna record everything on the PS3. And then that kind of became a bust because like, oh you got HDCP or whatever it was and you couldn't disable it. Right, side quest. So that kind of forced me to migrate to... So I almost brow the hammer on hot iron, the life of a smith. Part of our father is a village built on this trade, a proud tradition. We need iron ore, the mountain abound, mountains abound in it, an endless supply. Help us to find it, gather the ore we so need, a reward awaits. Yep. Your words glow like gems, you have a minor spirit, a will of iron. Now seek out that ore, look for crystals in the rocks, there you will find it. Find a source of ore, rain down blows with your hammer, the prize will be yours. Alright, cool, he's basically telling us where to go for it, we already did. Yeah, I like uh, longer running games, there. It's nice. Oh yeah, PS5, I want to do Demon Souls on the channel. And the PS3 just became a hassle to record because of all of its... Ooh, iron, okay. It just became a hassle to record because of how it handles uh, capture cards and all that. I didn't want to buy at the time when I was a small child to uh, deal with that. So it kind of made me migrate more to PC gaming. And I still own my PS4. And I still play it pretty regularly. I've got Bloodborne and stuff on it, but and that's a lot easier to record. So I can do that. And the PS5 seems to be the same. But Demon Souls on that would be a lot more fun to play than Demon Souls on the PS3, I think, anyway. How dare you! Oh! Oh! That's no way to treat a lady! Didn't your mother teach you any manners? Your words greet my ears. A good child should be silent and stay out of bars. I told you, I need to speak to the owner. It's important. He might know where my little sister is. A child in a bar is like a fish in a tree. You must search elsewhere. Ooh, fine. If you're going to be a complete pighead about it, I'll go and ask the guards by the gate instead. <laughs> Ooh, what do we have here? Well, are you going to tell me your name or not? No, yeah. Hmm, could be worse, I suppose. Excuse you? Listen, you and I need to talk, but my little sister is missing, so I have to go and find her first. I never thought I'd finally meet you in a place like this. It's funny how things work out. Alright, that was a strange encounter. Well, speaking of bars, 
Bartender, I would like a shot of your finest sake, please. Alright, so nothing's really in here, except for another side quest. And pots. Over here, 14. Good evening. I have more pots to break, so I'll be with you in just a moment, sir. I want to go ahead and steal your chest. Cool. Alright. A wedding beckons my son is to tie the knot, but he needs a ring. I have the gold ore, but sadly not the talent to craft a gold ring. But could it be true? Could you have a fun-sized forge and know how it works? Please forge a gold ring, not just a normal one. My son demands it. It has to be better than a plus one. And gives us the recipe book on how to craft them. See, this is what I'm talking about. Right here in the... Uh, original version of this game before they added the uh fun size forge to uh be pretty much anywhere you had to oh, I leveled up you had to do it uh go around and run to a campsite after this and then take it and then run back it was really fun but you know i like the convenience So we're gonna get with that, I think. It'll probably be like a plus two or something. Let's see what he gives us. Yep, there we go. All right, I'm gonna take care of the rest of these items to forge, and then we will give him the ring. So I'll be back in just a moment. All right, so we got ourselves a new sword. It is the Iron Broadsword 2. We got new armor. It's going to be this bronze armor. A little bit better. Probably going to work it again at some point. We could use the gold ring, but we have to give that to the old man. And he doesn't really wear anything else. So... So now we can give the gold ring to the old man. Yes. Boomerang. Pretty, I don't know. I never really use uh, boomerangs in this game. They seemed a bit nerfed in comparison. Dragon Quest VIII had pretty, pretty busted boomerangs. They were really nice too. As you know, I guess they had to nerf it somehow. Nothing here. Okay. Into the armor shop we go. Armor and weapon shop. I mean, I guess we can take a look and see what they've got. Uh, ooh, I think we can craft that pretty soon, though. If not, we can get it. I'm pretty certain you can buy that or craft it very soon. That's the same as what I currently have. Oh, he wears chainmail? Oh, you can craft that soon as well, so I'm not going to bother with that. Do we have over here chillins playing? Go around here. Nothing. Cool. In we go. Uh, a book. And pots. All right, what does this book say? Picture book entitled The Tale of Miko and Ryu. Brave Miko and Ryu, protectors of the village, scourge of the monsters. Foul creatures attacked in numbers beyond counting. They drove them all back. That there was one beast, the dragon of the mountain, they could not suppress. By a last success, the dragon was defeated, though at what cost? Ryu was lost to us, slain by the foul Tatsuma Tatsunaga. Never forget him. Well, that's sad. That's quite sad. Alright, so I think we have finally made it to the bathhouse. Thank goodness. Now we can join up with our 
best bud Eric and sweat the road away. The rumors were true. A restless spirit haunts us. My veins turn to ice. Pray heed my advice. A fearsome wraith is abroad. Do not tarry here. Okay. The bathhouse is a rather hot topic among the cognoscenti of Heliodor. It's famed for its marvelous effects on wrinkly skin you see. I must confess, the rather basic nature of the facility shocked me somewhat at first, but still, I am very much looking forward to enjoying its youth giving benefits. Youth giving benefits. Alright, my good gentlemen. I have arrived. I am here. So we meet again. Your friend is in the sauna, savoring the steam. Does it sound tempting? Will you don some lighter clothes and join your comrade? Yes. A wise decision. Let your soul be purified like fresh spring water. Cool. Now you're ready. The entranceway lies ahead. Sweaty blisserate waits. Well, I won't call it that, but I'll go. In. Nothing in here. <laughs> 